as I look back over my life, it's full of surprises. I never thought I would become friends with people in different countries all over the world. I see how God's hand guided me. When I began preaching many years ago, it is not with any thoughts that I'd be preaching to large audiences. Come to the cross! His gospel is for everyone! God has done this. Christ is alive! Modern America today, there is a vacuum of the soul. Our country is in great need of a spiritual awakening. Well, there have been times that I've wept as I've gone from city to city and I've seen how far people have wandered from God. Of all the things that I've seen and heard, there's only one message that can change people's lives and hearts. There is a way if you come by the way of the cross. The cross. The cross. I want to tell people about the meaning of the cross. Not the cross that hangs on a wall or around someone's neck. We receive our freedom purchased by the ransom in the cross. But the real cross of Christ. The cross expresses the great love of God for man. It's scarred and blood-stained. His was a rugged cross. His real purpose for coming was to die. I know that many will react to this message, but it is the truth. And with all my heart, I want to leave you with the truth. God says, I love you. I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. That he loves you, willing to forgive you. The cross is offensive because it confronts people. Even so, it's a confrontation that all of us must face. I look out across an audience when I stand up to preach, and I think of all the people with their different backgrounds and their various needs. And I know that they are objects of God's mighty love. To the point that he gave his son, his only son, to die upon a cross. And the cross was the most terrible form of execution by the Romans for criminals. And Jesus endured all that in our place because of our sins. We deserve the cross. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment and all that that means. I know that there are many people that dispute that. People don't want to hear that they're sinners. To many people, it's an offense. The cross is offensive because it directly confronts the evils which dominate so much of this world. You see, the Bible teaches that all of us are wrong. We've all gone astray. We've everyone turned to his own way. And when we turn to our own way, we go astray from God's way. And that includes the whole human race. And that's why the world is in such terrible danger right now. It's not dangerous so much because we have atomic bombs. It's dangerous because of the human hearts back of the bombs, filled with envy and hate and strife and greed and lust and all the other things that could pull the trigger. One reason that the cross is a defense to people is because it demands, it doesn't suggest, it demands a new lifestyle in all of us. Sin is a disease in the human heart. It affects the mind and the will and the emotions, every part of our being is affected by this disease. How can we break this bondage? How can we be set free? God helps us 
break those chains. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Everything becomes new. He can make you a totally new person. Jesus, our sins. They not only put nails in his hands, but before that, they scourged him. A Roman scourge was a terrible thing. They took whips and pellets on those whips and beat a person almost to death. And then they took that cross and made him carry the cross, which was in his weakened condition was almost impossible. But he carried that cross to a place outside of Jerusalem. And then they put nails in his hands. But that was not the real suffering. The real suffering is when he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that terrible moment, he and God, the Father, were separated. He shed his blood, and the shedding of that blood carries with it God's very life. The blood is the meeting place between God and man. And the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. And that's what Christ was doing on the cross. He was making atonement for our sins, and he was shedding his blood. Now, when you take the blood out, that means you're giving your life. And that's what it means. It means the life of Christ. The cross and the resurrection of Christ offers forgiveness of sin, offers a whole new life, and offers you eternal life if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. There is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only way to the Father, Father God, is through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now why Jesus? He's the only one that was born into this world without sin. But more than that, he was a righteous one. And when you come to him, you're clothed in his righteousness. God no longer sees your sin. He no longer sees your own heart. He sees Jesus. Now, I don't understand all about it. There are many things about the cross and about salvation that I do not understand. And I'm not told that I have to understand it all. I'm told that I'm to believe. And anybody can believe, a blind man can believe, a deaf man can believe, an old person can believe, a young person can believe. And that word believe means commit. I commit my life totally to Him. Jesus Christ from the cross says, I will save you. I will forgive you. I will change you. I'll make you a new person if you come to the cross by repentance and faith. Come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you come by the way of repentance. Repent means to change. To change your way of living and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. And I know that you're the only one that can change me. The Bible says in spite of our rebellion and rejection, God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son to die for your sins. And when Christ died on that cross, he became guilty of lying. He became guilty of slander. He became guilty of jealousy. He became guilty of the most filthy, dirty sins. Christ took the hell that you and I deserve. Now God said, receive him, believe in him, 
put your trust and your confidence in him and I will forgive your sins and I will guarantee you eternity in heaven. It's all yours and it's all free. All you have to do is receive it. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer, sentence by sentence, after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive. I've given my life not to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ. And he's given me a song to sing. He's given me a flag to follow. I have reason for existence. I know where I've come from. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. Do you?